Now, if you're anything like me, you were sitting up last night watching the live reveal of the 2021 Ford Bronco on TV or on YouTube. I gotta tell you guys, I am a diehard Jeep fan and I've owned over six of them in just a few years. However, I am super excited to see this Ford Bronco and I couldn't wait for it to be released. Now, a little bit backstory on the Bronco. As many of you know, it was released in 1965 and ended production in 1996. There was the first generation Bronco, the Bronco 2, and the last one was the full-size Bronco. Now for the past 24 years, the Bronco has not been available to the public and it ended with that full-size Bronco. So for all of those Ford lovers and the diehard Bronco fans, there really hasn't been any option for them besides the Jeep Wrangler, which I gotta tell you, I own a 2018 and they are absolutely incredible. But in today's video, we're gonna discuss, should you buy a Jeep Wrangler now or wait another year for the Ford Bronco? Now, I gotta tell you guys, I'm looking at this dead down the center. I was actually interested in ordering a Bronco on my own and getting one for me as a daily driver and as more of an overland vehicle. So this opinion and everything I'm gonna tell you guys is completely non-biased. I gotta tell you guys, I do own a Jeep Wrangler and work on them more frequently. However, I am a huge proponent of seeing competitors in the space and I love that competition because it creates a better product for us as the final consumer. Now today I'm gonna to go over a lot of the different specifications on both of them, kind of go over some of my personal feelings and what I'm really excited to see about the Bronco and some of the things that I think Jeep or Bronco did better over the other and vice versa, but we're gonna go through it today, so make sure you stay tuned. So the first thing we're gonna talk about is what you actually see first in this vehicle, and it's going to be the exterior of the Bronco versus the exterior of the Jeep Wrangler. Now the exterior of the Bronco is pretty similar to the Jeep Wrangler in the same fashion that you can remove the doors and remove the top. Now I will tell you guys the only difference in being able to remove the doors and the top between the Bronco and the Wrangler is that in the Bronco you can actually store all four or two of your doors in the back of the Bronco. I think that is a great, great feature to have on there and I wish my Jeep had it. You can see, or maybe you can't see, I have all four of my doors removed in the back of my Jeep and I have them hung up on the wall at home. There's no place for me to storm, and if I do run into inclement weather, I'm stuck. I can't throw any doors on there, and I pretty much gotta get wet or get muddy or whatever I'm driving through. So I gotta give huge props to Bronco for thinking outside the box and moving those doors into the back when they're not in use, as well as mounting to the mirrors onto the windshield. So they're mounted on the A-pillar, so they don't remove when you pull that off. When I pull mine off, once again, the doors and the mirrors are attached, so I have to bolt on some which I think look really cool that you can buy here at CJ's, but it is nice to have it right from the factory that they are bolted on. Now, as far as the swing gate, you're gonna have the exact same swing gate on the Bronco that you do the Jeep. I believe it's a lot taller though. I was looking at some pictures and a lot of the production models, and you can see that that swing gate is definitely taller than the JL Wrangler's tailgate, but they both do swing out to the same side and hold the tire on the back. The factory of the Jeep Wrangler mounts the license plate in the back left corner. Same with the Bronco, it's gonna be in the exact same spot. Now the bumpers do look pretty close. I have to be honest, they look pretty similar when you look at the two of them. Now as far as soft tops and hard tops, both of them are gonna have a soft top and a hard top. And I did read some options that were leaked and apparently on the Bronco, you can order a factory Sunrider style soft top portion for your hard top. Now we've installed a few of them here and it basically replaces your T-top or Freedom panels in the front and gives you a soft top that you can flip back and forth. I will also say while they both have roll cages, the Bronco does not have a center cross member for a sound bar or a light, which gives you a complete open air roof when as soon as you take that top off, it is like a giant square in there and you can see right up without the interference of a bar, especially for your rear passengers. I think that was crucial for them and really gives you that open air feeling. Now on the exterior too, I gotta tell you guys, the Bronco looks extremely aggressive. They both got the rounded wheel wells, but the Bronco just seems a lot more open. I gotta be honest, if they can fit a 35 from the factory, they're doing something right and really preparing for that aftermarket to lift them sky high and throw bigger wheels and tires on. Exterior, I gotta give it to Bronco and Jeep for both throwing roots to their heritage. You can tell that on the front of the Bronco just by the headlights and the entire shape of the front grille. Same with the Jeep Wrangler. The next thing that we're gonna talk about is the interior of both vehicles. And I'm just gonna tell you guys right away, I'm a diehard Jeep guy, I have a Jeep Wrangler with every tech feature that you can get, the largest screen, all the tech packages, all the buttons, and I'm still envious of what I saw on the release of the Bronco. I think that the Bronco absolutely nailed it and they really did their research before they released this vehicle. I think that's why it took so long. Back in 2017, they were talking about a Bronco, but it took so long and you're gonna get a better final product. Now, what I've seen with this is that the interior, although it's kind of on the exterior, they're gonna come with a keyless entry standard on the Bronco. On the Jeep, that's an option, and heck, some Jeeps you can still get with manual door locks. So that's pretty outdated compared to a Bronco, which comes standard with a keyless, you walk up, put your hand on it, and it opens up for you. 
Now I've also got to tell you guys that the eight inch screen comes factory on a Ford Bronco. That is the standard size. There's nothing smaller than an eight inch. It only goes bigger. So you can get an eight or a 12 inch screen in the Bronco. In a Jeep, I can get a 3.5 inch screen that's black and white and barely has any colors. So that just makes the Jeep look, it makes it look 10 years old already and the Bronco is just coming out. Now as far as seating goes, both of them are gonna seat, well the two door is gonna seat four and the four door is going to seat five people. The dash is very reminiscent of the most recent model Bronco, which I saw on the passenger side. They have the Bronco scripted on there. The 95, the 96, the last years of them had the exact same thing on there. So that was very reminiscent of that. And I think they went well back into their past and really gave it a touch towards what their heritage was, but really gave it the modern feel on there. And I think Jeep Wrangler did a great job on the same thing. I love the flat dash look and how everything isn't sticking out towards you. Jeep actually made a few remarks that over the years, especially in the TJ and the JK, they sort of got this center column that you can see on the TJ and the JK that protruded out way too far and wasn't like anything in the past. So with the JL, they really went back to their roots and made it look like something that was available in the CJ. Seating as well, the Bronco is apparently going to be available with vinyl waterproof seats. It's the same as a boat material that's UV resistant. You can literally throw a gallon of salt water on it and it's not gonna hurt it. That was a great idea from them. Jeep, you can still get the leather and you can get cloth, but nothing vinyl, nothing waterproof like that. So huge props to Bronco. Also on there, you do have the terrain select as well as your four wheel drive. That's going to be a shifting knob. And then you've either got your 10 speed automatic shifter or your seven speed manual shifter. So both right in the center. And I'm glad that they gave you a full automatic gear selector and not one of the knobs on there. I think when you're off-road, you really wanna feel that you're dropping it into gear and feel like you're ready to go. So props to them on that. Jeep has pretty much the exact same setup. So those are very comparable on the two. One thing that Bronco did to really challenge its competitors was to give it standard four wheel drive. Now Jeep has the exact same thing. You get every Jeep Wrangler has standard four wheel drive. However, a lot of the midsize SUVs in its class don't have standard four wheel drive. They're either front wheel drive or they're rear wheel drive or they got a mixture of all wheel drive. It's not the same as having a four x four on the Bronco or the Jeep Wrangler. So huge props to both of them for making that a standard option and not having to pick on anything or add on a feature to make that possible. Another thing that I really liked in the Ford Bronco was the availability to have trail maps as well as a 360 degree camera. I think that blew Jeep out of the market on there. The new 2021 Wrangler does have the availability to order the front facing camera and have a reverse camera, but no 360 on there. So the 360 and it had trail spotter assist, I believe it was called. So basically like having a spotter in front of you to help you guide through some terrain. That's awesome. I gotta say, if you're out wheeling, which you shouldn't be on your own, but if you're in a technical spot and you wanna see all over, make sure you don't destroy your brand new Bronco, that 360 camera I think is gonna come in great handy. Now the next thing that I'm gonna go over is going to be the engine, the drivetrain, and some of the more technical specs as far as off-roading goes. I will tell you guys that the Bronco was released with a 2.3 liter EcoBoost and a 2.7 liter EcoBoost. The 2.7 is found in the brand new F-150 and the 2.3 was found in some of the Mustangs and the smaller cars, but still makes a lot of power. Now the Jeep Wrangler is equipped with either a 2.0, a 3.6 or a diesel 3.0 liter. So all those are great engine options. However, I feel like Bronco did win it a little bit over with using that 2.7 EcoBoost as it makes a lot more horsepower and torque than any of the Jeep's factory gasoline engines. The diesel, however, does rival that and goes over 400 foot-pounds of torque, just the same as what that 2.7 liter is gonna be projected to do. There's no final numbers yet, but they are pretty even if you choose the diesel option. Press is probably gonna get a little bit better of fuel mileage on that. I'll also tell you that the Bronco came with a seven-speed manual or a 10-speed automatic. That's compared to Jeep's six-speed manual or eight-speed automatic. So having those extra gears, guys, I will tell you that that is what allowed Bronco to come factory equipped with a 4.7 gear ratio if you option it to that. And that's what allows Jeep to only be able to do a 4.10. You've got more gears, which means you can get up higher on that gear ratio and not be able to rev out the gears if you only had six or eight speeds and still be able to maintain a happy highway speed as well as a good crawl ratio for when you're going on the trail. As far as crawl ratio goes, with the Rubicon, the maximum you can get is an 84 to one crawl ratio with that four to one transfer case. Now it's rumored in the Bronco that you can get all the way to a 97 to one crawl ratio. So that is much, much higher and you can go a lot slower with having all that power still built up in your transfer case, giving power to all four of your wheels that are planted. Speaking of wheels that are planted, the Bronco and the Jeep Wrangler are both available with lockers front and rear and a sway bar disconnect However, even the Bronco thought of everything with that, they have a sway bar disconnected that can be activated while it's under load. 
So with the Jeep Wrangler Rubicon, you have to make sure your Jeep is on level ground to be able to deactivate your sway bar, and that way you can move it more freely. In the Bronco, you can be completely under load articulating, press a button, and as we saw in the reveal, it loosens them right up and you're good to go. I think that is a great option. And I know the Jeep Wranglers have a lot of issues with their sway bars, even though they work, they have a lot of issues basically getting it back to flat or you have to be perfectly level for it to reactuate. So Bronco must have fixed that issue and made it a lot easier for the consumer. Now both the Ford Bronco and the Jeep Wrangler share the exact same axles. However, the Ford Bronco has an independent front suspension. They still use the Dana insert on the center. It can be either be an M80 or an M210, depending on what you get. And then in the rear, you've got an M190, an M210, and an M220, I believe. There's a lot of M's and bigger numbers going on with Dana. I wish they would have stuck with the 44s and the 30s. Those were easier for me to count and less numbers for me to go through. However, I feel like Jeep does take the advantage on the front end there. Having a solid front axle makes it a lot easier to lift and gives you a lot more articulation. But with the independent front suspension, you can go a lot faster and it's going to give you a much more smooth ride both on the trail and off-road. So while it's gonna take you some more time to pick it up in the air and more parts, it's gonna give you a lot better ride off-road. Now speaking of ride, the Ford Bronco also comes with trail turn assist, which is going to give you extra hydraulic steering power to push those tires when you're going at low speeds, and the Jeep doesn't have that. The Jeep does have electronic power steering, which I think is the best it's ever been, but the Bronco does have the trail turn assist, so I, I'm excited to see that on the trail because you and I both know if you're out there with 35s, 37s, trying to turn your wheel when you're bashed up against a rock, it doesn't want to do it. So I'm excited to see that as well. Now the wheel size on the Ford Bronco and Jeep Wrangler differ a little bit. The Ford Bronco, you can actually get a 16 inch wheel, a 17 inch wheel and an 18. And then in the Jeep, you can only get a 17 and an 18 inch wheel. As far as the tire size on the Bronco, you can get a 30 inch, a 32 or a factory 35 inch tire that Ford has specifically worked with Goodyear to create a brand new compound that they say is excellent for all off-roading styles. Now with Jeep, you can get a 29, a 31 or a 33 inch tire on the Rubicon. And they're gonna be a mixture between all sorts of different brands. I'm not sure what Jeep was doing over the years, but when the Rubicon comes to it, you can now get, I believe, a, there used to be BF Goodrich KO2s, you can get Falcon Wild Peak ATs or Falcon Wild Peak MTs. So they switched a lot of different brands around. However, you are gonna get a 33 inch with that. So one of the most important parts for off-roaders is be able to have a great approach, breakover, and departure angle. Now I will say that the Bronco has great numbers on this. The JL Wrangler has great numbers as well. However, I feel like the Bronco has good numbers, but it has a 35 inch tire. So you've got to figure that it has an extra inch. If you calculate that an extra inch of height, so you're going to get some more angles on this. And a lot of them are close to the Jeep on 33s. So if you move your JL Wrangler up to a 35, you will see better numbers than this. However, from the factory, they're definitely great. So for these, I'm going over the highest spec Bronco as well as the highest spec Wrangler. So it's going to be the Bronco Sasquatch with the 35s and the Wrangler Rubicon. So as far as two-door, this is going to go in order of approach, departure, and breakover. The two-door Bronco has a 43.3 degree approach, a 37.3 degree departure, and a 29.1 degree breakover. Now the two-door Wrangler Rubicon has a 44 degree approach, 37 degree departure, and 27.8 degree breakover. On the Wrangler Forder, you're gonna have a 43.9 degree approach angle, a 37 degree departure angle, and a 22.6 degree breakover angle. And this is going to be on the Wrangler Rubicon and the Bronco was on the Bronco Sasquatch. So definitely a good comparison between the two most options that you can get on either model. Now the Bronco, they kept it nice and tight and made sure that no water gets into any parts that can be ruined by any sort of water or moisture splashing up into it. I'll also say that the towing capacity on both vehicles is 3,500 pounds and I all feature a class three tow hitch on the back, which can tow small campers or small off-road trailers like I use on the back of my Jeep Wrangler. Now the ground clearance on the Bronco is 11.5 inches on the very center, and the ground clearance on the Jeep Wrangler is going to be 10.8 inches. Now that is the ground clearance that is going to be true through the entire vehicle, so any obstacles that are lower than that on either of the vehicles are going to be able to cross it. Now I'm super impressed by that Bronco number, and it is great to see that they've truly kept to their roots and made sure that it is a capable go over anything. So as far as pricing goes, the Bronco and the Jeep are definitely very comparable on the pricing. However, I feel with the Bronco, you are getting a lot more standard features with it, including those LED headlights, the keyless entry, and a lot of other features that the Jeep doesn't have. So if the price is a little bit higher, just remember you are getting those features, whereas Jeep, it's an add-on, you're probably gonna get to the exact same price. 
Now on the base two-door Bronco, it's going to begin at $28,500 and the four-door begins at $33,200. On the base Jeep Wrangler, you're gonna be at $28,000 and then $31,000 for the four-door. So in that, what we're looking at is going to be a very comparable price. However, the Bronco, you get a lot more for your money. I'd say at the $28,000 mark, I'm sure it's gonna be the manual, you know, as low optioned as you can get. However, even as low optioned as you can get, you're still getting a 2.3 turbo or a 2.7 turbo. You're getting the remote keyless entry and you're getting the LED headlights and taillights and all the lights around it are gonna be LED. In Jeep, you're getting no remote entry, you're getting no LED headlights, no LED taillights. You're getting a 3.5 inch screen and you're not getting any remote proximity entry. So for the exact same price, you're getting a lot with the Bronco. However, with the Jeep, you still get that solid front axle. You still got all the removable top and doors. So it is a very comparable pricing on there. And I think it's gonna be a, a really good competition between the two to see really which one can outboast the other on features and which one can outsell. Now the first edition Bronco is going to come in at $59,000 for the two door and $63,000 for the four door. I'm gonna compare that to the Rubicon Recon because I feel it has the same attributes and the styling of it is more off-road and just the highest trim package that you can go for the off-road model. The Recon starts out at 43,000 for the two door and 46 for the four door. So you can see that there is a huge disparity on pricing for that, which I gotta admit, you can add everything onto that Recon still come in under budget from the Bronco. You can throw a diesel on it, LED headlights, proximity to entry, everything like that on it and still come in under the Bronco. So up at the higher trim packages, I think we're gonna see a little bit of pricing gap between the Bronco and the Jeep. And that's gonna be up to the consumer on what they really want to spend their money on. And overall, I'm really excited to see both of these out on the trails and on the highways here in the near future. And I absolutely love the new Ford Bronco and cannot give Ford any more commendations on the way that they released it, as well as the cinematography and everything that we saw on the reveal. They chose a great time to release it at eight o'clock on a Monday night where they could do it on major television networks and YouTube to get all their audience captivated. And as many as you know, we went on the website and even tried to reserve one and it just glitched all throughout. So there is a ton of people going on and ordering them. So I'm really excited to see what the aftermarket, everything that we can come up with for you here at CJ's to completely outfit your brand new Bronco, or if you have a Jeep Wrangler, help you outfit that too. Now until next time guys, I'll hopefully see you guys out on the trail in a brand new Bronco.